Hi, everyone. Welcome to Living the Liminal this week. I'm so glad you're here. We are in the midst of a three-part series. So if you have not listened to last week, please go back and listen to the most amazing conversation I had with Melissa Lyons. She is my co-host for the next, well, it was a three-part. So it was last week, this week, and then it'll be again next week. Um, she is a self-discovery expert. She's a best-selling author of these two most gorgeous books. So check out her website in the show notes so that you can order them. They are beautiful, brilliant about grief, loss, love, everything about great life. And we are having a conversation about permission and choice and how they are agency for change. And we've kind of talked a little bit, Melissa, about women, but we, at the end of last week, we were like, you know what? It's not just about women necessarily. It's about being human, being human and understanding we're in this human experience, but we're also this divine um, essence, divine creation within ourselves. And how do we navigate some of life's stuff in a way that, that allows us freedom and peace and joy? Um, so we're here this week to do some more talking. Welcome, Melissa, back. It's so fun to have you. Thanks, Christy. I'm great to be here with you, too. And if you haven't listened to Melissa's um, first interview with, with us here on the podcast, it was in episode 58. So go back and listen to that first episode if you want to hear Melissa, uh, because she has great insight. And we talked a little bit more about her story, her backstory, uh, but Melissa and I just love delving into topics and just kind of seeing how deep or far we can go with it. And uh, I kind of feel like that's what that's what's so fun about having a co-host with, and doing it with you, Melissa, is we get to just do that for the fun and, and share it with everyone else. Because if we're getting something from it, why wouldn't other people want to get something from it, too? Absolutely. So... Okay, so the other day I was watching a favorite movie of mine and I'm gonna own it because it is. It's from the time I was little, I loved this. Pretty Woman, okay? Love Have you seen Pretty movie. Woman? Okay, love it. Like too okay. many times. Yes. So there's no, no, that's no, there's no such thing as too many times actually. No, like every time I watch it, I feel like it's almost the first time. So I'm watching Pretty Woman the other day and there's this moment that gets me every single time. And when I say it gets me, it tugs at my heart. I cry. And then my kids look at me like I'm crazy because I'm crying because I cry at everything. But that's a whole other story. But this moment gets me, right? And it's the one where um, um, they're laying in bed and, and Julia Roberts is explaining to Richard Greer about when she was younger working at um, the car races or something, moving cars, parking cars. And, and he was like, you could be so much more. And she said, but the bad stuff is easier to believe. Okay. That even just now, my, my, I mean, my little sensation I get when I'm getting emotional comes into play. That moment gets me every single time when he says you could be so much more because she has always listened to these external feedback system of what others said about her, what others said she could do, what others noticed about her. And she says the bad stuff is easier to believe. Do you believe that? Well, if you pick up a pen and you write your name and you're right-handed, it's so much easier to write with your right hand because that's what you've been conditioned to do. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's easier to believe if you don't break that habit. Yes. If someone yeah. hasn't said to you, like you're left-handed or do you know? So yeah, it's easier to believe until you know better. And then once you know something, it changes everything. So from this moment forward, it won't be easier to believe because we've had this conversation. But until someone breaks that pattern, I think that it is. And don't you... So I, I feel like that's like, for those of us who are sensitive beings, it's yeah. easier to believe our minds and the external landscape than to believe 
that what we are feeling is okay at the depth that we're feeling it. Well, absolutely. It's like it's work. Like Christy, so if I said to you, like, what's easier? Do you want to go train for a marathon or do you want to sit and watch Pretty Woman with a big bowl of popcorn? <laughs> right? There's definitely something easier. But if your heart and soul is set on running the marathon, then it's not going to be as hard to go out there and do that run. So once we choose that we want to understand ourselves and discover our highest potential to really know what our passions are to really understand why we feel yucky sometimes and why we feel weak or small the second that we decide that that's important to us it does it's not so hard anymore now it's an adventure well that's true yeah and it and and the answers just kind of keep coming to you like that's to me yeah. the fun yeah. It's like, it's like a, a meteor shower. Like it's, it's beautiful. It's like climbing through, climbing up a mountain or through the mountains, it, it lifts your, like it's, it's hard to breathe or whatever, but if it's something that you're passionate about, you don't feel the, the effort because you're so enjoying the scenery. And I think as we re just start to discover who we are and discover just how beautiful we are, and we had no idea how beautiful we were, it's like that. You forget that it's work anymore. When I say work, meaning you're efforting a little bit because you're intentionally going down a new adventure, a new path. Yeah. And I like the way you said intentionally, because you kind of are, you're, you're making the choice then you're making yeah. the choice to understand yourself at a different way. You know, I never for the longest time could understand why I get so emotional over things. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and I would look at other people. Okay. Like, here's an example. When graduation, Okay, when my older son graduated from, from high school and college, I, I mean, the emotions come. I, I almost cannot stop the depth of what comes through me. And, and there were so many years that I would beat myself up over, what in the freak is wrong with you, you wacko? You know, why do you have to do this every time? You have to like get all wiggy about everything and you have to cry and then you get so emotional about and and it was almost like I felt the impact of everything going on and it took me a long time to realize sweetheart you're just feeling everything that everyone else is feeling and you feel it in your heart at the same time you know what I mean yeah but the only thing I would say about everybody else who's feeling that to people who are like us, which is very few people in the world. In fact, not everybody feels it to the depth that we feel it. Um, people who are highly empathic, highly sensitive people. We don't, we're not the same as everybody else, but we've tried so long to be like them because we stood out when we cried every time anything happened and everybody would look at you like, what's wrong? So just embracing the fact that that's actually a gift or seeing it or understanding that it's a gift, it does make it easier. But but we aren't like everyone else. That's the one thing. We are different in a beautiful no, And way. I think it's, it's not even, it, and we talked about this last week, giving yourself permission each mm -hmm. step of the way. So for me, it was giving myself permission to own this part of me, right? To say, it's okay to feel all the things you can feel at the same time and the depth of what you can feel it. And then the next permission was like the level, the next permission was, and it's okay to be this in you, which you're right, makes me different. I never wanted to be different, but then all of a sudden I am different. I, I can watch something that nobody else will be crying in the entire room and I'm over there. And then I'm trying to hide it from my family because now they, they laugh at me. They now look over at me because they know. They now know the moments in a show or something where they're like, mom, mom's doing it again. She's doing it. And even my daughter will laugh because she even has some of these tendencies now. So she'll look over at me. We talked last time about leading by example, right? She'll look over at me and I'm like, it's okay to be me. Like, it's okay to be this. I just feel into what that character is feeling and that character is feeling and that character and you watching it and the impact this has on the world. And and sometimes they're like, mom, just watch the story. Just watch the movie. Yeah, it's funny. I've actually had to have an intervention with my family to ask them to allow me to really feel the, the movie because I do always cry. And they'll, same thing, it's really weird. And so since then, 
because I say it takes away from me from being me and I really want to be able to so if you guys could just give me that minute and not highlight it or out me to the whole world for being who I am right just for, for a few moments while I process I would really appreciate it and you know what they 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 do they honor it now but I I used to get angry and then I explained it and now it becomes a lot more it's a lot more peaceful now they just yeah they I think yeah. they get more tickled by it now because now they know it's coming like now they can even tell when we're watching something or when we're like even when we're in you know a party for someone or a celebration of some sort they'll look over at me they know they're looking at me and I'm like yes yes it's happening just let me be for a minute and they're like they just get this little grin because they're they're waiting for mom's gonna do this like Oh, mom. Oh, mom. This is just what makes you you. And I'm like, yes, it is. Like, this is just what's going to happen, you know? Well, or, and oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and anybody watching who has, hasn't talked about this with you before, which is probably no one because this is so much about what you do and, and who you are. But, you know, when we're, when we're gone and, and we're lying on a table and they decide to crack open our brains, our brains are different. They're yeah. actually, neur the neurons are different in people who are highly sensitive and highly empathic people. Like, we're not the same. We're not meant to be the same. And anybody who has this, who experiences it, you need to know that, like, you are wired differently. This isn't just something that we say to make you feel better. Well, and even when we talk about, like, the depth of emotion, I know there have been moments when something will happen, okay, like the other day something happened in our community and it was in the school district. And I mean, I flared up and my family was like, why are you getting so upset? And, and I had to sit there and I was like, cause I'm feeling everybody like I'm feeling. So the depth of me getting pissed off was maybe like on a scale of one to 10, I was like at 11, but it was because I realized, see, I'm, I'm now getting, it's like a rainbow. I realized the colorful way that I can experience life from this, this person, right? I can feel their, this person, I can feel that the community at large, I can feel that. And, and I was, so it was coming out as being pissed off because that's like we talked about last time, having the language for our emotions. That's what my family saw it as. And really what, what I was experiencing was just a colorful array of emotions from the experience that everyone was going through. And I could understand. And I've, I think that's the other thing is that's really where the gift comes in is you have all these emotions, right? And you can feel them at depths, but you also have this depth of understanding that I can understand every single person's viewpoint or, or where they're coming from. Do you find that too? Yeah, I do. But it's funny, as you were talking, I was thinking, I remember a time where I would be really emotionally charged right from watching something like that, totally. And I don't know at what point it changed. And I'm not sure why I'm, I'm actually truly reflecting as I'm answering this question to you. Um, but I now seem to come out of my body a little bit and become an observer. Yeah, because because I don't want to take it in anymore. And I don't know if that makes me less sensitive or less intuitive. I, like, I'm not saying, I don't know if it's better or worse or, or right. it's even a thing, but I no longer um, take it in quite the same way. And, and it's, I noticed recently I was watching a documentary on, on Ukraine and what's happening there. And I was able to watch the horrific scenes and not actually feel them like I used to. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm just starting to figure, I understand that that's different now and I don't know why. Do you think maybe it's because we understand ourselves now better? So I hope we can so. feel it, but not attached to it. I hope so. I, I really, I, this is just brand new. Like this just hit me right now as you were talking. Yeah. Um, but I, I've noticed a real change. I used to heavily take on everyone's emotions um, mm -hmm. and I'm not finding that I'm doing it the same way as I used to. I, the more I learn which is like daily, you know, the more I develop this agency for changing, not changing who I am. So not, so no more changing the, the quality of how I experience things, but maybe the quantity. So again, asking, 
is this mine? Do I need to own it? Or can I just witness it? Like you said, can I just observe it? Can I just understand it in another person? Can I just offer it back to them with love so that they can experience it? I don't have to take it in my body anymore. It, I don't think I always had that kind of agency of knowing. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and I think it's an important conversation because anybody who's, who's here with us and, and going through this with us, they might still be doing that um, at a deeper level. And it's a gift that you do at a deeper level and then it's an even bigger gift when it doesn't affect you when you know it's not yours, which I learned a lot from you um, last week when you were talking about that as well. Yeah, because I think it's, you know, okay, let's open this debate up. I want to know your feelings on this. A lot of people talk about sensitivity, so highly sensitive people, okay, or HSPs. And, and I'm not an expert on highly sensitive people. I'm an expert on me. I can tell you how I do it or how I've learned it, right? And the sources I've used to learn more about me. And then there's that argument, right? The, the, the conversation that's happening about empaths and that those of us that that kind of define ourselves as an, as an empath really comes from some kind of trauma induced experience in our lifetime. How do you think, how do you feel about that? I don't, that's not my understanding or my belief at this okay. point that it came from a trauma. I think we're born, um, we're born into this world with a, with the purpose of, of, of bringing light. Like we, we really have a purpose. So anybody who's highly empathic, or highly sensitive, and there's a degree within that, you've come to be a light worker of sorts. You're here to help the world become better and help other people. And one of the ways that we're able to, to understand that contrast is because we do have a lot of darkness in our life. So, so maybe that's where your trauma part comes in, but the darkness comes in because we don't know how to deal with these gifts. We're given these <laughs> gifts, but then we're not given the ability. So like my two children, they were in their mid, mid to late teens when I understood that I learned that they were empaths as well as me. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, I was able to help guide them better than I was guided. So I, 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 I don't think it's tied to trauma, but it, it's definitely tied to more darkness, more darkness of, of not knowing who you are, because it's like, you know, when you pull back the bow and arrow, yeah. like you're stretched more so that when we're let go, we have so much more to do and we're able to do so much more. That's so a beautiful that way contrast without the darkness. So I think we've all been through some darkness, but the younger ones are getting to, to, to access their gifts at a much faster rate than we were because they have this hope. Oh. oh, yeah. I mean, the minute that, you know, it's like the more I get to know myself, and you're right about this, the more I can offer my children. And, and you know, everyone who's listening, or if you're new, I have four children and they are all different. Two of them are more empathic than the other two. They are all four sensitive. I will tell you that. So we've been able to really tune into how, how we all take in information, how we all take in the world, how we all absorb, and also then how we all discern and process what we're, what we're taking in. And then how do we develop I use the word agency. I just love that word because to me, it's like the foundation or process or how then do you offer it back? How do you take it away from yourself as if you have to take it on and you offer it back to the world, right? Or to the person and being able to help like my, my children learn those things that I never, I was a, you know, older adult. That's all I'm willing to say. <laughs> when I started to understand these aspects about myself, but to be able to give them to my children to understand and to be able to have these awakening conversations about, well, what's your body telling you? And is this yours or did you take on something in that, in that experience? And you know how to safeguard yourself. You know how to, you know how to, I don't really like the word protect, but that's the only word I know right now to use is how do you keep yourself sacred enough to where you're not taking on other people's stuff that's not yours to take on and own. And when we can help someone else do that, it's like freedom. Well, and it feels like freedom because it's what you were meant to do. That's, that's your calling. And so, yeah. you know, like the second you're doing the thing that you're meant to do, 
it lights up your soul. It lights up your passion. It ignites you. It's the freedom you describe. That's when you know you're aligned. And remember, I, I don't think I can get through one interview without reminding people that when you're, when you feel yucky, you're really quite lucky. But so yeah, it's the opposite, right? So, so it's that thing, like when you're feeling yucky, you're not, you're not like fulfilling your purpose in that exact moment, by the way, you're thinking, but when yeah. you are fulfilling your purpose, it's because you're thinking how free you feel. So it's very cool. And I want, I want to kind of shift this conversation because I want to give people the inspiration to permit themselves to feel. I think that is just such an important piece of our world right now is how can we not be afraid to fully feel emotions, not operate from them, not project out from them, but just to let our bodies feel for the period of time that they come in so that we can gain deeper understanding about who we are and what's important to us, what's of value to our soul, like you speak to, like what, what you don't get to know yourself without understanding your emotions. Yeah, so here's an, I like the, to use the analogies. You use that one of trying to go in the darkness last time and, and you know, needing a guide that has a light. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if our body is clay and we are full of seeds and, the, and our emotions are water, when the mm -hmm. water comes down, when the emotions come down like the water into our body that's clay with the seeds, our seeds are never going to get the water that they need to nourish and grow because the clay repels the water. So, yeah. so our body with clay is going to repel the emotions. But if we are actually earth of, of the earth and we're filled with seeds and the water comes, the water is going to come right through us. So the emotions will come through us. It will, it will leave what it needs to leave and then the rest will just flow. And, and that's why, yeah, don't, we should not repel these emotions. We should sit with them. We should allow them to flow through us. Give us the nourishment and the goodness and the messages that they're bringing. Because every negative feeling or emotion is bringing you a message, a lesson, some kind of insight into, into where you go from here. Yeah. And I believe we are so afraid of failing at our bodies experiencing emotion that we then work so hard to avoid them. But where did that come from? That, that, I don't there's know. a limiting, a past limiting belief of someone said, get, get thicker skin, toughen up, don't be so sensitive. And so we think the only way to do that is to not allow ourselves to feel anything. And you know what? That's probably the right way to be based on that advice. But so what we're saying now is you are highly sensitive, possibly you do feel things deeply and there's, there's so much growth that can come from that. So let it come through you, not sit with you forever, but let it flow through you so that you can keep moving on. Yeah. You know what it, image was coming when you said, where did we get that? That came to me. Um, and you know, Melissa, you and I do a lot of like images or channel, like we'll channel you, you do so beautiful channeling um, the little rhythms and the little rhymes in that way. So I wanted to just tell our audience who is, who are listening, but what image came to me was back in those moments of like the great depression, when life was coming in so fast, so challenging for so many people. And, and I'm not saying that that's when it started by any means, not at all, but that was the image that came in. And so I'm going to I'm going to feature the image as if it's an example of when I think what happens for so many of us in this human experience, when life starts coming in and it does, it can come in at a very fast pace sometimes. If I think some of the challenges that have caused us to revert to a closed off space of, of doing and not feeling first is the idea, and it was a thought. I think it was man, manufactured in the mind, right? Mind made of if I feel I waste time and I have no time to waste, I have to just go do, 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 do. And I think those of us who are highly sensitive empaths, okay, that we take in, we understand that our best sense of knowing what to do comes from feeling it first because there's wisdom, there's insight from our higher self 
there's there's a deeper understanding about the best way to move forward. Does that make sense? It does. It totally does. That is my experience that when I come across situations where I think, oh my God, I don't have time to be feeling all this stuff right now. I just need to go get something done. And then I catch myself because it's like, no, your power rides, right? Your power is in feeling it first because it helps you make different choices that are, it helps you make choices that are aligned to your soul's value. It helps you to trust yourself better. You deny and betray yourself when you just run right into a situation and don't take the moment to fully feel it first. It's, it's true. And we have other, other analogies that we use in different parts of our life that, that fit in. It's like slow down to speed up. Mm -hmm. It's so true. The power of pressing pause will, will change your trajectory and give you more, um, more power and strength moving forward. In, in the direction that's most aligned with where you with, with where you're meant to be. Do you ever get do you ever find yourself getting mad at feeling something that you don't want to feel? Not anymore, but I, yeah, absolutely. I didn't understand that my feelings were messengers. I didn't understand that they were my guidance system. That's my human GPS. Yeah, um, and, and they're just telling me like where I am and where I need to be. So, no, not now. But yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. And, and I even find myself in little moments when life is happening fast, being in that and going, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Just, just calm down for a moment and feel it all. Just let yourself feel it. Yeah. You don't have to know what to do right now. And it yeah. really only takes a short period of time. It's not like it takes days. Yeah. And you know, and you can sit with it and, and decide like, so it takes you off your path. Um, it can be something simple, someone cuts you off in traffic. Like, mm -hmm. is that a reason to sit and be angry for a period of time? Mm, probably not. Let's, how do you move through that? Mm -hmm. um, but, but your best friend was, was taken from you, you know, tragically. And, and, and it, the wave comes through. Is that, is that a reason to be sitting up for a few minutes? Probably. But if yeah. you don't have more than a few minutes, then you say, you know, like, I'm going to let this thought sit with me for a moment now. And then tonight, I'm going to sit with it longer so that you, you acknowledge it and you say, I, I'm going to, I'm coming back to you, mm -hmm. but I, I don't have, it's not right now that we can do this, but we will do this. And you actually make a commitment to your thought mm -hmm. that you're not going to dismiss it, but you just can't deal with it now. I love that. Not dismissing it. That's so important because what I'm remembering a time when my, one of my kids was younger, who's very sensitive, very empathic. And it might have even been back then, I didn't quite even understand what was happening. I think I always knew because I, I'm thinking back to like the books that I would read or, you know, the parenting stuff and I would try to figure stuff out. And I remember our conversation with this one of ours was this experience that you're feeling weighing it to say, is this something I can, I need to devote all this time and energy and mind to, or is this a little thing? Like, is this a big thing or a little thing? And that was, that was how we first started having conversations with our kids was, is this a little thing or a big thing? And now we go to, is this yours or somebody else's? Is this yours? To own? So those were the levels of how we took steps to support. And so it doesn't, it's not like just using those on kids. It was just that that was how we brought more understanding and more awareness to our children was, is this a little thing or a big thing? Because little things you can feel and then you release. Bigger things like you're talking about too, right? Are, are emotions that they reveal to us that we have the depth of being able to love deeply, to care deeply, and we are emotional beings. And that's how we get to the transformation is when we allow ourselves to feel that depth, then we can get to the change. The way we are supposed to, to acquire an emergence of something different than what we've ever lived before. And so those two questions, is it a little thing or a big thing? And is it yours or someone else's? Yeah, I love that. 
Um, but I had a, a, a moment where my, my heart and chest tightened when you were talking. So I want to acknowledge that in case anybody else had that happen as well. So when my children were, were young in those ages where we would have had those conversations, I wasn't equipped to have those conversations with them. Christy. Yeah. So, you know, I thought, oh God, you're a better mother than me for a, no, no, but, no, but that fleeting moment, I just want, yeah. I want to put it out there. I want to acknowledge it in case anybody else had that thought as they were hearing you, because that is the right thing to do. Um, but beyond that right thing to do, the only other right thing you can do is, is all, you know, and the best you can do. Mm -hmm. So when I showed up for my kids in those days, the best I could do is I don't even remember, but I know it wasn't that good, but I also know that it wasn't meant to be that good or it would have been, and that my kids needed to learn the lessons on their own or a different way. Mm -hmm. But now as they're older, we, we have these conversations on a bigger scale, but the same type of thing, because now I'm equipped to do that. So I just want to put that out there for anybody oh, totally. who's in my situation. Yeah. I, wasn't, I was not able to process anything myself. So goodness knows I couldn't help my children process. Well, and, that and again, that's I couldn't process Christy. Well, that's about giving yourself permission of not knowing. Isn't yeah. it? Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. Well, until we know better, then you're doing the best you can. Right. And we can't look backwards and wish it was different. No, it's never going to be different. That's no. wasted emotion. That's wasted time. That's right. wasted energy. Anything that's behind totally. you, unless you're just taking that as a reminder that you to bring yourself back to the present, anything other than that takes you backwards and it's so not serving you. So I'm going to go on a limb and say that if there was one emotion that I don't really like, it would be the idea of regret. Totally. I think it's a wasted emotion and I'm going to say it. I'm probably going to get, you know, whatever, but I'm going to say it. I think regret is just a waste. It's just a garbage can emotion. It's a, it's like, what's the point of regretting something? That means that you're, you're, I feel like that's judging yourself for not being where you think, again, that's a manufactured mindset you, you ought, you were to be. This is not the way life works. It's, it's a journey of unfolding. So I completely agree. The only thing I would not disagree, but I'd just like to state as a, is that the beauty of regret is when it shows up, it's like feeling yucky, quite lucky. Regret is showing you a place you haven't healed, a place you haven't released, a place you, you haven't forgiven. No, you're and, right. And so, okay, so then, so I'm gonna jump on what you just said. So even, even not worse, but the idea of forgiveness and forgiveness of self, I struggle mm -hmm. with this deeply. I struggle with forgiveness because if you didn't have judgment, there would be no need for forgiveness. Right. So if you're working through forgiveness, keep doing it because it's powerful and it's healing. But recognize that you're only there because you're still judging. Because when the judgment's gone, there's nothing to forgive. So regret. basically, you and I are showing the world right now that nobody ever knows the whole story. Nobody ever knows. Nobody is really, and I'm going to use this, even though nobody is really the all knowing on, on the, the guru or the eight, like nobody is the agent of everything. You don't know what you don't know. And yeah, when emotions, even though I think regret is a wasted emotion, you are so right. I didn't even really think about that, that it's sort of like resistance. It just, when it comes, it is a signal for you. It's a gift. Yeah. It's a message. Go into it. Yeah. yeah. Go there. That's the dark yeah. part. It's asking for healing. Mm -hmm. And when you're needing to forgive, do the forgiveness because goodness knows forgiveness is so key, but forgiveness is wrapped up in judgment. Whoa. Yeah. When you, I mean, well, regret is wrapped up in judgment too. Well, and so, so there is a, there is a guru though in all of us, Christy, and there is a guru for everybody. And, and, and it's the idea of whatever you're going through, find your way, find your way back to joy to peace in this moment, to gratitude for whatever you have in this present second, not tomorrow, not yesterday. That's that's the most guru thing we can do. But then of course we're not gurus so that these are the steps and the, and the awarenesses we need to have to at least shift towards that. Well, I like when you say that because when I said nobody is the guru, like there's no one person who has all the answers, I probably should have stated it better this way. There's no external guru, guru for you. 
There is only your Mm -hmm. internal inner guru for you. Only you know who the you are. Nobody else knows that. No coach that you hire is going to know you better than you. No relationship you have is going to know you better than you. Your job, the only role you are ever to play in this journey of human experience is to get to know yourself better every single moment of every single day. Keep getting to know. Use the external resources available. People, books, podcasts, shows, TV shows, courses you're taking, retreats you're going on. But you are the inner, you only know yourself. You, nobody else is going to know you better. Yeah, I agree. And, and if you're not sure about what you know or you don't know about yourself, ask yourself, how does this make me feel? Mm-hmm. If it makes you feel a little bit lighter, a little bit better, a little bit closer to feeling better, a little bit more along the lines of where you feel you want to be, who you want to show up as, those things, that it's all about how you feel. Yeah. And I think it's about looking at life like it's just a mirror. Looking at people, they're just a mirror. Looking at relationships, they're just a mirror. And, and just saying, what is what am I supposed to get from this? What am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to move forward from here? Yeah, why is this showing up for me now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to realize sometimes life just sucks for a little bit of time. Yeah, well, it only sucks because you have an expectation. Mm-hmm. You didn't have your expectation on how it should be. And I mean, don't get me wrong, life and death, yeah, things suck. But at the end of the day, it's outside of your control. And it only sucks because of how you're processing it. And you're processing it as a human. So yeah, it hurts until you figure out a way to process it better. And make a different choice. Yeah, or see it differently. Recently, we were in an experience that was quite quite stressful, quite engaging our stress levels at a high level. And there was one point in it that I said to my son, okay, stop. We're stopping and we're choosing peace. We're going to rethink our decisions here in this moment. And we're going to choose peace. And I have to say in that moment, it, was, it, it almost needed a little bit of out-of-box thinking because it was not a peaceful situation. No matter how you looked at it, it was not peaceful at all. And yet when I said those words, we need to choose peace here. It was me recognizing, okay, I'm kind of in this, I'm in this spot where there's a lot of emotion. You're in a spot where there's a lot of emotion and we need to figure out a way out and we'll figure the rest out later. And the way out was, if we choose peace, that will open a way because it releases everything else. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, when I said, we just need to choose peace, it was like we both felt lighter in some way. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. The song that came to my mind as you were saying that story was that Carrie Underwood's um, song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Like, mm-hmm. I'm letting go. It's, it's out of my hands now. So I'm just going to be here and see where it lands. See, my favorite thing is surrender. It, I mean, yeah. literally, it makes me, people think when, when I say that, they look at me like, you are crazy. No, I love surrender. I love just to be like, yeah, I'm giving it over. Don't even know what to do. Don't have answers. Not really sure even where the next step is. I'm just offering it up. Let the divine figure it out. Love it. And then I, I think of surrender in a couple different ways, but the biggest image that I can offer our audience is I think of surrender as laying on the ground, always the ground, never floating or anything. It's always just laying on the ground because I'm connected to something with my arms out wide. Look at, I'm even doing that with my hands now. That's so funny. And my legs out wide and just laying there and just nothingness. Full onboard surrender. Let it all go. And in that moment, the next, the next right way to act or be or think will just kind of float in. But it's just letting it all just, it just feels so open and free to me. Yeah, love it. 
I felt what, it as he said it. What do you think is the hardest part of people giving themselves permission to surrender and release? Why do we hold on? Because you don't understand. It's, I, I think if, you, if people really understood what surrender meant, and what was on the other side of surrender, it would never be an issue. And everybody would walk around, I'm surrendering, I'm surrendering, I'm surrendering all day long. It took me three years, three and a half years to, to start to really understand that the harder you try, the longer it's going to take. Oh yeah. So there's no pretty way to that. surrender. I mean, don't you think there's no pretty way to do it? There's no like, you just have to. Yeah. Well, it's just like, just stop trying and then, and then surrendering just comes not surrendering is the surrendering is the definition of not trying right anymore. Not trying to be attached to the outcome, not trying to control the outcome, not trying to wish for a certain outcome, just being with whatever is the next thing that's in front of you. For me, it's always, it, it begins when, okay, let me, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. for me, when I know that then that surrender is asking for me to go there is because I notice in my body there's a tightness as if I'm holding on to something. And it could be like where I notice my hands kind of starting to tighten and grippy. Not that I'm holding anything, but I just start to kind of feel a sensation. Or I feel my feet sort of um. And this is the, the sensitive empath in me where I can actually attune to these things. So I'm not thinking everyone needs to go here. I totally understand this is part of how sensitive I am that I notice the subtleness of the way things kind of happen for me. But it, it feels sometimes too like my feet are just really in the quicksand and don't want to move. And these slight little sensations in my body or my legs get very... I'm going to say like um, pieces of wood where they won't bend and I can feel these subtle little things in my body. And, and that is when I know surrender has showed up and it's asking, it's calling for me to go there. That's so interesting. I really like to hear that. It's an awareness. So, I mean, I think awareness is key for everything, but for me, the more aware I get to how my body subtly demonstrates things to me, and even then in a bigger way demonstrates things for me. And I'm trusting the body is wise. It's got all the answers. It's true. It's true. And there's an element of co-creation that we don't talk about very often, you and I. Um, but I do talk about co-creation sometimes. Tell me what you mean by co-creation, okay. then I'll tell you if I go there. Yeah, okay. Because everybody so, talks about it differently and... Yeah, so for me, so maybe when you said surrendering is messy, that didn't really al align with me because to me surrendering, surrendering is a bird flying in the air. So surrendering is very beautiful and peaceful for me yeah. um, because I feel like, co so co-creating to me is that I'm not the boss of my life and I'm not in charge of what I'm creating wh or what I, whatever my life is going to become because I'm with spirit, right? My spirit and my soul. I'm trying, I'm not trying, I'm choosing to co-create with them. So I'm here to serve. There you go. Co-creating is serving, serving spirit or serving, um, serving our soul. So the moment I feel like I'm trying to, to take charge of where I'm going with my life and what I'm doing with what I'm accomplishing mm -hmm. is the second I remember, oh yeah, that's not the surrendering part. The surrendering is what, what are we going to do together today? Mm -hmm. What are we trying to say or accomplish here? And then I'm no longer alone in it. So I'm always surrendered in that sense until I'm not surrendering and, and I realize I'm not working with anyone anymore. I love that. What are we here to do? Mm -hmm. And we is our higher self. And then you don't feel so alone. Hmm. Well, we're never alone, right? Never. No. We just are alone when we forget to remember that we're never alone. Yeah. 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 Alone we forget to remember. I love that. I love that, that that's a new level for me. Like that just opened up, huh? Yeah, that just added to what are we here to do? So maybe surrendering is also about listening to the partner you have in the divine. 
right? Or the yeah, universe stop, or how, stop your asking. higher power. Yeah, stop asking, start listening. And so that's why surrender is beautiful to me. But so you want, so the messy part for me, Christy, is when I'm trying to get something accomplished or done, when I'm trying to create something. That's very messy when I forget that I'm not alone. That's when I get all messed up in my head, trying to write, these are the five things that this course is gonna give you. These are the things that are gonna, and I'm trying to like sell things to the world. And then I get really messed up. I can always feel, okay, again, a subtle shift of my, and I realize this is my awareness of how I'm doing my body and what it's doing is when I'm in, like you talked about, when you're trying to write content because you and I write content for all of our work, right? When I feel myself doing this, leaning so much into the work and, and it's like, I can feel my body kind of tensing up in a very rigid way, almost as if I'm sitting there with my head against whatever and trying to yank out the ideas. And for me, when, when I get to that surrender, it's the subtle shift of, oh, I'm letting someone else come in here and be a part of this. So that's beautiful. So you do surrender beautifully. Oh, I think I do. I, yeah. I, I think I've become more aware of like how it's a whole body orchestration. Yeah. You know, before I think I years and years ago, I thought it was just a decision. Oh, it's just a decision you make. It's just a decision. And now I'm realizing that it's, it's a whole embodiment of, of a moment that you're right. I love the part that you say you and I forgot that there's somebody else here, some other entity, energy, essence that's a part of this with me. And it's funny because in the very first episode of this podcast, I talked about I take God everywhere I go. And I used the word God that day, you know. Um, so I, I flip around all the words, but I take that energy everywhere I go. And it's funny, you're reminding me of that. See, that's what's good about a conversation with someone. They remind you of things you have forgotten. Yes, and you do the same for me. So it is good. And I hope that we're doing that with everyone else as well. And I hope our listeners understand when we're just chit-chatting here about stuff, there's no right or wrong way. There is no right or wrong way. It is the way that you are on is the way for you. Mm -hmm. And if you need help, support, guidance, ask. Seek out some kind of external support system that really understands the depth of what's going on and that has been trained in a framework of that and has a deep connection to a higher power and has the lived experiences to help you to the depth that you need to go for your life. Yes, and I say this partly joking and I'm not even gonna I, I won't even explain it, but we are meant to stop and ask for directions along the way. We are, yes, we are. Um, to stop and ask for directions along the way. We're not supposed to try this alone. Mm -mm. We were never, well, we're, we, we came in never alone. So why do we always think that we can do it alone? Like we're crazy in that way. No. Why can we, why do we always think that we are like, oh, I'm powerful. I can do this alone. And we can't, we just can't. Well, we can, we, but we just might not be taking the most efficient route or path. So I guess it depends on what we're hoping for and how much. I was always in a hurry. Um, and I'm glad I was in a bit of a hurry enough to figure out that I didn't need to be in a hurry. But, um, but there is an easier way, an easier path to wherever it is we're meant to go. And yeah. if I get the choice of hard or easy and I'm going to end up in the same place, I would really rather go you know, with ease and grace <laughs> every time. I know, but isn't it funny that sometimes we choose the harder way for a while? Like it's almost it's like funny better. builds a muscle in a way. Yeah. Or the duality of seeing the black and the white, right? To see the contrast. We almost need to contrast. Like you said in our last episode, in order to know what you want, you have to know what you don't want. So it's almost like every once in a while, the grace comes in that if you have an experience and you've chosen the hard way to go about it, your body and your life and your awareness needed that boulder in the way because then you can contrast to what ease and grace really do feel like. Yeah, exactly. So again, it comes back to, we're gonna circle back to regret, 
forgiveness, judgment, they're all good. It's not like they're a waste of time. I said that, but that's now I'm realizing that was stupid to say because. No, they're they a waste of time if you stay levels there. Of awareness. You're not wrong. It's a waste of time if you stay there. Oh, oh no, you're totally right. Yes. You're, no, you're right. They're, they're a total waste of time if you stay there. You Otherwise, stay there. Like, yes. I, that's what I thought you were meaning to say, and I agree. Okay, I'm going to say that's what I was meaning, just because I oh, don't that's know. That's what I thought you meant anyway. <laughs> I don't even know. I, I kind of float sometimes in my thinking and talking. So, no, you, you just helped clarify that. That's I needed that clarification. Thank you. Because, yes, it's, it's not that there, there are no bad emotions. It's that when we stay in those places, that we don't move through them. We're meant to move through emotions, not stay. Because mm -hmm. we don't want to give them our energy. We want our energy on the things that bring our light back to us. The high powered energy, the high power emotions of like love and peace and joy. The nutrition and nutrition ones. We'll the talk about that next week. Okay, we're going to talk about that next week. The nutritious ones of emotions and how we nurture and nourish that part of us. Yes, okay, I, I think that's that. a good place to maybe kind of say or kind of bring this to a close because we're coming to, we want you to feel, we're, we're advocating for you to feel your way in life and give yourself permission to feel. And that if you are a person who feels to the depth of things, that is not a bad thing about you. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. Learn to understand your, your, your system right? Your body, the way your emotions work, the way your mind orchestrates through them, learn your system so that you can amplify what you're here to do. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Totally. Okay. This gets me so excited. Oh my gosh, Melissa, another great episode. Thank you so much for this conversation. I look forward to next week's conversation as well. And again, in our show notes, you guys, we're going to have all this information for you and check out Melissa's books on her website. Check out that episode 58 so you can hear Melissa's interview because it was an amazing interview. And I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Melissa, for being here again this week with us. Really appreciated it. It's always a delight to, and you always help bring me such good awareness of things that I need. And I, I really appreciate that. You help me to remember. And likewise, honestly, likewise. That is what people, you should be around people who always help you to remember your light. Let's just end on that note. Thank you for listening to Living the Liminal this week. Um, remember who you are, brave confidence, courageously choose you, be the change, embrace your growth, expand your awareness. You are a beautiful soul. I love you. Peace out, my friends. Mm -hmm.